What's up, guys? So, today I am going to be looking at the just ended, or I mean, ended like a day ago or two days ago now, um, NPP Manifesto Law. And I'm just going to go through the cliff notes. I'm going to be using Join News and TV3 on Twitter. So, basically, some of the uh, snapshot images, you know, that kind of stuff to just talk about it. I did watch the Manifesto Lodge. I actually did. And I'm surprised I did, but I watched the whole thing and I have thoughts, but I don't want to say too much or I don't want to make this video too long. So we're just going to go through the cliff notes. And then later, I'm currently reading the Manifesto properly so that um, when the NDC also does the uh, Manifesto launch, I can compare the two because I think over the over a month or so of both parties talking, there seems to be a certain consensus on the direction that we should take the country. Like for instance, both parties seem to have mentioned that they want to train a million people in the in tech type of stuff or in the digital space too. It's a lot of similar things are being said. As to who to believe, that is up to you and I who are listening and then we exercise our franchise. So um, I'm going to jump in right now. But before I do that, two things. First one is, look, this is an election year. We are looking for peace and everything. So in that quest for peace, we all need to understand that we all have our preferences. And whatever affects our preferences, they are still our preferences. Whether you may believe that someone is an idiot for believing in the words of one party as opposed to another and all that stuff. I think it is very unnecessary and very inciting to just lambast or to attack someone because of their beliefs. People believe what they believe because of all the experiences they've had in their lives. So um, let's not do that. I saw, I've been seeing this um, influencer battle about who is a supporter of which party. And look, this is, this is what politics is. If you want to dabble into politics or you want to just look like politics seemingly or presumably is the lifeblood of the country or more like the hearts running the country. So you will always find people taking a stand and drawing a line in the, in the sand so i don't see i've seen a lot of the stuff with with you sheldon and kali j jai jimmy stuff like that um i just think that we should all chill now the second thing is more important than the first and that is just advice what i want everyone to understand or what i want the people of ghana or even anybody watching to understand is that the only way we can truly, truly ascertain the capabilities of a president or an incumbent president is only via posterity. It's rather unfortunate. It is highly unfortunate that the only way we can determine that, oh, you were a good president is after you finished the job. That is with the framework or the constitution and the laws and stuff that we have today. Granted, if certain edits and changes are made to our constitution and stuff, then we can hold some of these people more account accountable. Because I think I saw in the news today, I thought in the specific countries, either Australia or one of these Scandinavian countries where they were looking to put it into law that politicians should it, are not allowed to lie. Like you could be penalized or punished if you lied. That's an interesting one. Anyway, let's jump into it um, in no particular order. So, so this one says, our manifesto is a blueprint that will take us out of our difficulties. I see. So here's the thing, just off the top, it is very difficult for the average, very, very important, the average Ghanaian to hear such things from the current sitting government that it means that you understand that we are in, in difficulties you are not going out of your way to apologize for these difficulties 
but you are then in turn telling us that you have the blueprints to fix these difficulties. And the question, the most logical question is to ask you, why have you not implemented these things already? Now, some may argue that these implementations will take time. But at the end of the day, the, the, the onus of believability lays more on the current sitting government because they have been in power for eight years. They have had their time to showcase what they want to showcase or what they have to showcase. And we know them. For lack of a better term, we know them, we've been with them, and we are in the situation that we find ourselves. They, some people in the party argue is because of the Ukraine, COVID stuff. I think after four years, we should not be using this as an excuse, even after two years, because there are quite a number of countries that have survived this. This is, this is the truth about a manifesto. A manifesto is like uh, the Western child writing what they want to Santa Claus. It's a wish. It's a wish list. It is um, a, a, a collage of promises of possibilities. But in we can hope or we should hope that many of these politicians actually hope most of these things will come to fruition. But if they do not, so that's why I keep saying that the the onus of believability lies with the current sitting government that is trying to retain power because you know what is going on. You know what's happening with our funds. You know what the deals are and everything. The the and uh, the other the opponents, yes, your opponents don't know. They don't have this much information. You understand? So theirs is more of a wish list than yours should be because you guys have all the information. But let's move on. I've spoken too much. Um, next one says. Our economy is recovering. I have no doubt in my mind that the good people of Ghana will renew our mandate. Ejapa Mesa. Um, I honestly I don't like saying I'm talking for the average person, but based on my experience talking to average people, anytime I go out in an Uber chatting with them, um, I don't think many people feel like the economy is recovering. I'm sorry. I will touch on what why I have an issue with some of these statements because these statements land in the realm of macroeconomics and i will address that towards the end of this video but yeah okay if you feel like the i mean if the economy really is recovering on the level that i would i personally would want it to recover continuity is important i agree but i don't feel the same way so Dr. Baumier's economic expertise is what our country needs right now. Alexander Afenu Marti. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ex ap apologies. I'm sorry that I laughed. But the average Ghanaian does not feel this way. The average Ghanaian does not feel this way. I think the, the allure of Dr. I mean, His Excellency, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumier's uh, like that that narrative that he's an economic whisket I think we should shelve it for now let's just shelve it let's not touch that if you follow me on Twitter there was a point where I said that if um, His Excellency uh, Baumia wants to win this election he should start with an apology because many people feel like he has a lot to apologize for especially among the youths a lot of the youth feel like he has a lot to apologize for. As to the reception of that apology, I personally do not know. Next, Napo is ready to transform Ghana with his arrogance. Hmm. Alexander Afenu Market. Um, bro, I don't think you should be saying this. Like, no disrespect or anything. I feel like a manifesto, like I said, a manifesto is a wish list. You are coming to tell people that, oh, vote for me because this is what I will do for you. You should not be. It's like, it feels like they were trying to double down on the negativity in order to spin it into a positive. If I was running this manifesto launch, all positives. We are not about to even be talking about the opponent. It shows a certain level of confidence that like, Charlie, you guys are not important. It's like, we, we know they reach you. You understand? Like, we don't care about you. We, we are doing our thing. So, that's why I'll die. So this statement, I, I don't think it helps. 
Uh, next one is there is nothing the alternative Mahama can offer. Vote for Dr. Aumia to take us to the dream land. Dream land. I think that is a wrong thing to say. Dream. None of us want to go to the dream land. And this is fact because it's like, if what, what are we going through now? Like I keep saying, the onus of believability lies with you. You you are already in power. So what dreamland are you talking about? Sometimes it feels like the narrative, there's not been a congruent or a pointed direction when it comes to the narrative around His Excellency Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia. It feels like, because some people say A, some people say B, he says he's the driver's mate, and then during the manifesto summer, like he's been in the known of everything the whole time. He's played a pivotal role in all of that. You need to pick a narrative. You need to pick a narrative, a drive it home to that narrative throughout. Next, um, Dr. Baumia is a game changer for the youth of Ghana. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the youth believe that. I, I, I honestly can't. I'm not going to lie. Let me say this. In the beginning of this video, at a certain point, I said that the, the only way we can truly measure the capabilities of a president, the only way we can truly, truly measure is in posterity. That is after the wrapped up. This is the truth. No matter who you are, where you are from, there, there is a possibility. Statistics will allow us the chance to say that there is a possibility that His Excellency Mahmoud Baumia has Ghana's best interests at heart, has the best interests of the people at heart, believes every single thing he says, and is actually going to execute every single thing, meaning that he could actually turn the ship around. That possibility exists. The opposite is also true, but that possibility still exists. And that is what many of his supporters will hold on to. Next is, we will win this 2024 general elections. Matthew Opoku Prempe. I mean, see, see. Next, uh, Dr. Baumia is destined to take Ghana to the next level. Matthew Opoku Prempe, the next level. I mean, hey, it's politics. There's a duality to everything. We'll see. We will see. Because honestly, the current level that we are, it's not great. It's not great. Next, Dr. Baumia is not corrupt. He has never been investigated for corruption. I, I get where this is coming from. And I will say that the honest truth is, so far, yes, this is one of the few things that Dr. Baumia can actually 100% claim. He's not been investigated for corruption. And I personally haven't heard any simmering ties of him with corruption besides certain talks about his brother-in-law or his brother or stuff like that. But he, as an individual, I mean, like I said, time will tell if these things will stick, if these narratives will stick. But yeah, I think he can hold this one for now. Our economy is firmly on the path to recovery. Baumia, Vice President, His Excellency Baumia. I don't think we, the people living in the country, feel that way. We don't. I will have not more than 50 ministers, Baumia, yet. I agree. I actually did a video some time back about cutting, like reducing the number of ministries and everything. And I think even 50 is a lot. I feel like 50 is a lot. Drop it more and the MPs, we should shave them down. Now. We should shave them. Down. Uh, Baumia government to establish daycare centers near workplaces, including marketplaces. I don't know. I don't, the near workplaces make sense. Imagine like five good solid daycare centers in the Accra Central. I feel like 
that 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 could be dope because many parents could go and see their kids even during the break time and stuff like that. Marketplaces, I'm not so sure about that. Bamiya government to plant 50,000 CCTV cameras across Ghana to check crime. Can we just get street lights first? Can we just like, before we do this 50,000 CCTV cameras, can we get street lights consistently for 18 months? After that's happened for 18 months, throw in the CCTV cameras. Uh, we will reduce the cost of public transportation. Baumia, how is that going to be done? And then the general question is, if whatever plan you have to make this happen, why hasn't it been done already? See, these are some of the things that... Huh. Anyway, let's switch on to TV3. Um, yes, the Napo, I've read this one. Okay, this one says, if indeed... They, the NDC, believe Dr. Baumia is not consistent with his vision. They should stand up for a debate. I don't, I'm sorry, don't like this statement either. Because the only reason I don't like this statement is because the narrative around Baumia is not cohesive. It's not coherent. It's not precise. Like, there's a duplicity in the narrative begins with him saying he was a driver's mate make him the driver and he turn the ship around but then we being told that he's been an active participant in everything that duality makes this statement calls into question or makes this statement questionable because it seems like the vision is not consistent if the narrative surrounding him is also not consistent you need to show a certain level of consistency across the board for that to happen our opponents are waiting to copy us. I yeah, I feel like I feel like both parties should have dropped their manifestos at the same time because the shots of you copy this, you copy this is gonna go around for a lot. Um this one says we are voting for change. <laughs> what change? Are we talking about the change in I don't know, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Um this is from former president John Ajekunko for when you present a manifesto, it should be a manifesto that addresses the entire nation. So let me break this down into basic English based on what I've said. When you present a manif when you present a wish list, it should be a wish list that addresses the entire nation. Basically be meaning that your wish list should also have the interest of everybody in the country at heart so that it would be acceptable. Um Every child that goes to school this time leaves with the best results ever. Okay, I don't know, but like I said, I have had conversations with people in SHS and it is utterly confusing. I, I, I can't see much to the results, but it's been a very confusing thing. Hundreds of promises made to the Ghanaian people have been kept. Yes, and I'm sure another set of hundreds have not been kept. So, yeah, I know they know that the momentum is on our side. Now, I like this type of speech because he is not naming anybody and he's keeping it positive. That is very important. It is very, very important. My government will move toward leasing rather than outright purchasing. This thing, yeah, it started with the whole oh, credit system and all that stuff. It's going to be extremely difficult to create a credit system in Ghana, especially when you are going to create like you need a bad you need background information to create a credit system. So I need to identify you, Mr. A, that this is what you do, this is how much you make, uh, this is how your money goes and comes, stuff like that. And then your ability credits the credit system is based on your ability to re make repayments or to repay your debts the faster you repay your debts the more trustworthy you are which results in a reduction in your uh what do you call it in your interest rates but with how Ghana has been set up for so long to speed track that we may actually end up in the realm of having to use individuals abilities to purchase 
things as little as airtime credits and data and even at the ability to repay those things because if we are just going to go off tip or there are not a lot of people that are borrowing from financial institutions like that i didn't know as far as i am aware okay next is baumia is not someone who is going to say that ghanaians have short memories excellency the president nana adu dalfa akufu i don't know i i don't know i don't know what this every premier league club to get a bus the uh, every commitment he dr maung baumia has made i can put my hand on my heart and tell you that he will deliver the question that will be asked he said some things in the past has he delivered them these are some of the issues that people will have and people will be would use to easily um derail the momentum of your conversation but all in all um i'm gonna read the full document and then when the ndc also does this i will compare the two but now let me touch on what i was saying about when they talk about the economy there's there's macroeconomics and then there's microeconomics macroeconomics deals with is is a national thing it deals with things like gdp and stuff like that like things concerning the country's outlook economically so it's basically what is your portfolio as a country among the other entities which are the other countries in the global scale so uh basically kind of like your business report card that you have to show the other countries to be able to do business with them so they'd be like okay you're cool blah 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 then there's microeconomics microeconomics is on the personal individual level and it is more entrenched in the realms of basic economic concepts such as supply and demand um and profits those ki- those kind of basic things that affect us as, as individuals personally i think we as a country should be done with macroeconomics like from our politicians we should be done with this chatter of macroeconomics i don't care about inflation i don't care you can tell me that inflation has dropped from 50% to 3% but if it's not represented represented in my purchasing power i don't give it down i'm sorry i don't care i just don't care because these are metrics you use to go and do some kind of business and at the end of the day it doesn't affect me so it's if i think we as a people need to tell our leaders that yo cut down the expenditure cut down on the numerous projects make a tight ship focus focus narrow down and make us the citizens our lives better you may ask where is the government going to get revenue from here's the thing let's just say hypothetically you keep the e levy and then you drop things like import duty petrol drops and stuff like that granted the government may not have as much money to work with but your people will live better lives and when your people are living better lives and they are becoming um, because the, the 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 world is a global it, like everything now is on a global scale they will be able to compete and take parts or eat pies from other countries they could actually eat into the gdp or of other countries because now i can buy this abcd machine at with such a reduced import bring it into the country and make a product that someone out there would be interested in and then that's what exportation is i think ghana needs to realize that we we need to maximize our low to mid um or small to medium skill businesses and the only way small to medium skill businesses are going to arise is when the average person is comfortable enough to start a business you argue are the main politicians argue we should go into entrepreneurship how do you go into entrepreneurship when you can't even like recently i was i well, I, I i watched a bunch of tiktoks and i saw the cost of some food and i was like this is crazy this is crazy and to a certain degree fine i feel like the the stores are taking the piss 
but I also feel like these people may actually have to put the prices at these price points in order to survive as a business. It is even hard. It's gotten to a point, I'm going to be honest, it's gotten to a point in Ghana that it is very difficult to enter one of the most basic and successful businesses, which is entering the food because everyone has got to eat. But if it's gotten to a point where you are even wondering if you should feed people and make money off of that, then there's a big problem. So I think many of you politicians forget we, are, if we don't care. We don't care about inflation. We don't care about any of those things. We just care about our purchasing power. We might anything that is going to make our lives better, anything that is actually going to drop the prices of these things. Because if your inflation figures are coming down, but the cost of uh, these things is going up, then what is? So yeah, that's pretty much it. This has been a very long video. It makes me wonder what my comparison video is going to be like. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, Jump into the comment section. Tell me what you want to say. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay blessed. Peace.